Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the talk. I hope you had a good lunch. So we are going to talk about uh, Groovy for Java developers. In other words, how Groovy simplifies the life of Java developers. Before the talk, I want to clear one thing. It's not that Groovy replaces Java. It added some new feature on top of Java. So whatever you can do in Java, it still support those, but in a better and a simpler way and more readable way. <clears throat> About me, my name is Puneet Behel. Uh, I'm an associate tech lead at To The New. Uh, we are located in India and following are my GitHub credential, LinkedIn, and Twitter. So today we are going to talk about a uh, little bit of background about what Groovy is and uh, how, what are the features of Groovy and uh, how we can you know, move the programs which are in Java, uh, how we can write a similar version in Groovy. And uh, then we'll dive into Groovy closures, which are very important aspects of Groovy and very powerful feature. And then we'll see what traits are and uh, next thing we'll see how we can get started with Groovy and what all things come under Groovy ecosystem. <clears throat> so what is Groovy? Groovy is a dynamic language. Uh, it, it, it is an alternate language which runs on JVM. Uh, it supports optional typing, uh, met runtime metaprogramming, and much more capabilities. And uh, it also supports static ch type checking and static compilation. Uh, this, this is a type of annotations Groovy support where you know, this tells the compiler to, uh, to, to take care of typos and complain about it, and also see if method exists or not. Uh, but you still, but again, you cannot use these over your builders, like for example, HTTP builders and XML builders. So, So this is, uh, what, this is from the Groovy doc site. So any information you need, uh, you can always refer to the Groovy doc. It's much, uh, much verbose and you know, uh, it has a lot of examples you could go through. So some features about Groovy. Groovy is, has a flat learning curve, which is, for example, Groovy has a very a similar syntax as Java. So it's very easy to switch from Java to Groovy. And uh, it, it also supports scripting, so you can now write your Groovy scripts and run shell scripts in Groovy. And I, I hope you already had some presentations around those, right? And uh, you can write DSLs. Uh, we had a talk yesterday, if you were present over there. So you can also write DSLs using Groovy. And there are much more powerful features like closures, builders, compile time metaprogramming, yeah, traits, et cetera, et cetera. So how Groovy is compiled? So Groovy source code is compiled to Java bytecode and which runs on top of Java. So please mind the version of Groovy. It's older version. So Groovy 2.5 is out already, the alpha version. And 2.49 is the latest in 2.4 series. And you can run any uh, your Groovy jar, uh, any program using Java as well. Just set the Groovy jar in the class path. So how to set up Groovy? Go to the Groovy lang site, and there are instructions. But also, you can also download the binary version of Groovy and set the Groovy home variable and for bin appropriately. And then you should be able to set it up. Another uh, interesting uh, way to install Groovy is SDK man. I think most of Groovy developers use SDK man to Set to manage different versions of Groovy. In fact, you could install Grails and other other Rat Pack frameworks as well. Windows user, uh, I'm not a Windows user, but uh, but you could use uh, Baboon, which is a Windows shell. Uh, I, I hope you will love it. It's similar to Bash, and it makes Windows user life a little bit easier. Okay, uh, Groovy shell. Uh, Groovy provides some utilities, and shell is one of them. So, so in order to open a shell, once you set up Groovy, you could simply write Groovy sh, 
and this will get you into shell. Yeah, so you could simply test your Groovy, Groovy programs here directly. Hello. Yeah, you could say, yeah. So you could directly, so I use it uh, very frequently to test few things whenever I need to run a Groovy program. And so uh, apart from Groovy Shell, it also provides Groovy Console. It's a UI interface. Uh, in order to open this, you just type Groovy Console. So it'll take a little bit of time, but it'll open up. Uh, right. Yeah, this is a Groovy Console interface. Uh, I hope you could read the text. Yeah. So you could simply write your Groovy programs here. Printlin will come. <laughs> yeah. So this it has some features where it shows uh, your lines as well, uh, what lines are executed, stack trace, and uh, yeah, you could use any one of them, and you could also use Groovy Web Console. Console. It's so so you could run your Groovy programs. You know, it's not, uh, you could do all development over here. You can just test some POCs or some sp uh, glue code over here. So, yeah, this should also work. Good. Okay. And that should do it. Yeah. So, close this guy. So why I should use Groovy? Uh, yeah, you know, rock, paper, scissor, and that's why you should use Groovy. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, the reasons are uh, Groovy is a very powerful, have very powerful features like closure traits, and which are not, uh, though Java has a support of Lambda functions, but closure is much more than that. And uh, you could write DSLs very easily in Groovy. Uh, and uh, optional, you don't need to write a lot of boilerplate code in Groovy, like public static void main, so all that have been taken care of. And uh, dynamic, it has a lot of dynamic features, uh, kind of meta programming. It's easy to learn, it's, it, it, is, it does not have any new syntax. It's similar to Java, but removing some ceremonies. And it's very simple and expressive. Uh, So let's see, uh, we know the definition, we know what these are. Let's see an example and see how, uh, what does these things mean. So here's a simple program in Java. Uh, what does this program do? Can anyone of you tell me? Yeah, it just says greeting and yeah, some place, it's adding some place and a name to greet, that's it. And it's a lot of line, lots of code, and let's see what we can, when we are moving to Groovy, what we can do. We can remove all the semicolons. Uh, these are optional in Groovy. So all the getter and setters comes by default, so you can remove these. You don't need to write this explicitly, unless you want to do something custom. You could remove public keyword. You could, in fact, remove return keyword, you know, the property annotation, uh, you could have, uh, you know, println shortcuts, you don't need to write system.out.println, you could remove parentheses, and let's see what it looks like after removing all of these. Yeah, and uh, there's one more thing we could do, which is uh, this hello name, uh, welcome to play string, we could make it more readable. So, in order to use a variable inside this double quote, uh, you could use dollar annotation and the name of variable to use it. And this is called g-string in Groovy. Don't confuse it 
with other things. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So let's refactor this white space and see what the GUI program looks like now. So this is the GUI version of the same program. We just say, hey, greeter, create a new property and a greet method, and just create an object and print ln. That's it. So let's see some of the demos uh, in Groovy. OK. So I'm moving to this text editor for a while. <sighs> Examples. Oh, man. Just messed with some shortcuts. New file. Hello, so let's say uh, what we need to do if we want to print something using a Groovy program. So yeah, you need to write public static void main. No, you don't. So you just simply say, hey, print hello world. That's it. That's it. That's what you need to do. And uh, <clears throat> for example, Groovy provides a lot of uh, features, like you could, you know, say three dot times. Are you able to see the font? I'm sorry. Three dot times. You know, print hello. So this is uh, about the readability of Groovy, and. Uh, <clears throat> Let's, we'll see more examples. Uh, let's move further on the slides. Let's say now, let's say you want to pass an XML. How many of you have ever worked on a program like this where you want to pass an XML? Cool. So we all know how, it is, uh, how the Java version looks. Let me just quickly show you the Java version of the program. <coughs> I have it already. Pass XML. So this is the Java version of the program. So you have to create a class, a void main, a document builder factory, blah, blah, and uh, all these try-catch blocks. And let's see how we can write the similar program in Groovy. Uh, I think I already have. <laughs> Let me just write a, create a file here. Parse XML dot Groovy. So Groovy provides a library, Groovy dot, yeah, let me just see if I have it written over here. So yeah, you don't need to do anything over import. So this is the Groovy version of the program. You say, hey, Groovy, uh, create a new XML parser. Uh, just need to reduce the font a little bit. And you say, path of the file. And uh, you say print ln, just print these attributes. So yeah, let me show you if this works. And it should work. Yeah. So if you want to see this XML, uh, so this is the languages.xml. So let me just verify it's not a hard-coded version. Let me just adding Haskell. My new language, which don't work. OK, so let's see if it works. No, I think it's reading from some other path. Ouch. Yeah. So this is how you could simply read up XML. And in order to generate an XML, you just say import groovy.xml.markupbuilder. You say def XML new markup builder. XML.languages. Say language 
Let's create some languages over here. So don't get confused about uh, the way I'm creating this list. Uh, we'll talk about it later. So you could simply create a list like this. Java Groovy. SQL. Scala. PHP. You could say langs dot each name. This is the program to generate XMLs using Groovy. And let's say if I want to you know, uh, get some random user data from an external library, and I want to write a pro Groovy program to get some op objects populated from there, so how can I do that? So let's say this is my library, which gives me random, man, cannot read it. Yeah, this is a library which gives me some JSON object. And how can I write a GUI program to do this? So I can simply say new URL. This is my URL. And dot text. This will just. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. This should return me. Yeah, print it in. Yeah, this is the result coming from the URL. Now I want to parse this JSON, verify this JSON, then I could simply say port groovy dot JSON dot JSON output. Could simply say output dot pretty print. Use data. Data. Yeah, you, since I said these are optional, you could simply say this as well. It's not printing anything. Again, same mistake. I can write print a in. Uh -oh. No such property, pretty print for class JSON output. Is there any typo? Never mind. Pretty JSON or something. Just give me a second. JSON. Yeah. Let me just verify the pa package. Yeah, I don't know what was the error, but yeah, this is the JSON response, how you can easily read it. In fact, you could have a JSON parser to get this data in, in a map or an object or whatever you want to do. So these are some of the examples uh, how Groovy makes the life easier. So let's move forward. <coughs> so yep, we saw languages. Yep. Groovy also support operator overloading, where which means you could override these uh, operators, and uh, all basically all operators on Groovy are method calls. So in your own class, you could if you override these methods, you can simply say you know uh, uh, 
A plus B on that object. And for example, a student, if you want to, or a salary or an amount, whatever it is, you could simply simplify this by overriding this plus operator. And uh, now you can call this A, B, or A minus B, or all these methods. For a complete list, you can just refer to this URL in the end. Groovy closures. What are groovy closures? These, we saw it's very powerful. Groovy closures are basically nothing. It's just a block of code and uh, given a name. And it's a most commonly used feature in groovy. And uh, in fact, your method can ex accept closure as parameters. So we'll see how. So let's say uh, the way to define a closure is header. So let's say we have this def header is equals to a, b, which just do some. So let's see some examples. Oh man. New file. So where I write def adder number. I'm intentionally having this a and b and not as integer. Let's say a plus b, okay? So in order to call this closure, you could simply say adder dot call one two and this is three. In fact, you could uh, there is another way you could call this closure. You could simply say remove the call and simply say adder one two. So it's three. And uh, what if I do this? <coughs> See, it should fail. So, so this adder has a different behavior since the operator is overloaded in string and it behaves differently based on the context what is passing, what is being passed inside this adder. So, if I add a boolean <coughs> to it's sorry, if I add a double number, it will still work. So very small things, but uh, when you use it in real life, it helps a lot. Uh, you could explicitly have uh, your specific adder where you define, you know, uh, I really want an integer adder, not any adder. So you could explicitly say int a and b, and then it will work. And uh, <clears throat> you could uh, implicit parameters. So all closures have implicit parameters. Def, uh, say hello, and I'm saying println hello. So, hello. So if I say say hello to, so all closures have implicit variable name i it, which basically is something passed an argument to the controller, oh, sorry, closure, and let's say I say hello, Puneet, it says hello, Puneet. In fact, you could name this, uh, make this more readable by saying name, and here you could say name. I would recommend using this way, okay, sorry. Yeah, and uh, similarly, you could create uh, some, you know, logic double it, and uh, whatever being passed this, this close this method call, it will say just double it. For example, a string will be double a, and based on the context, it will behave differently. Or you can explicitly say double it and number. So you could also uh, define closures and say that I'm passing variable number of arguments. So in this example, if you say assert sum is equals to sum one, two is equals to three, but you could say ABC is equal to ABC, so you could have a closure which accept variable number of arguments. And please mind this assert, this is just an assertion uh, which will tell us if the, this expression is true or false. Default values, so you could have a, have a closure where you passed a a variable, uh, some default value. So if you call this multiply two and three, it will be
be 6, but if you call this 5, then the default value being picked up. So let's see a real demo of this too. So I can say uh, LT A, B, and C. So let me just copy this. A, B is equals to 10. And I say A to B. <coughs> so since this is returning, so you could but important thing to not note down here is you cannot have default value for this guy, I guess. Two. Okay, sorry. Sorry, you, you can still have it. Uh, you can also uh, assign some methods to a closure. So, for example, I want to reference this log method inside log base 10. So, you could simply use dot and ampersand and the name of the method. And now I can use it like this. Groovy collections, we already saw a glimpse of it, like. Um, So like uh, I could say, in order to define a list, you could simply say list, list is it names is equals to John, Alex. So you don't need to do new array list or new hash map or whatever. So in order to define a map, you could simply say map is equals to this. This is, you can define an empty map if you want to add some key simply define like this. And on top of that, Groovy uh, adds much more uh, methods uh, to make the life easy. Like uh, in order to iterate, you have uh, names dot each, names dot collect, and there are a lot of methods available in Groovy collections. Collect. Yeah. Uh, let's let's take an example where we want to say that we want to double the salary of all employees who are, have more than four years of experience. So let's, yeah, nobody do the double salary, by the way. <laughs> New file. So I created a class employee name double salary teacher experience. So let's create some employees. So Groovy provides some method to add employee, new employee. Can you help me with some names? I know a couple. Salary. Experience two years. Can you just help me with some names, please? Alex, Anna, or Kate, David, or Bart, Puneet. Yeah, okay.
Okay, so we created a list of employees. So you could simply verify that it's created. Let's move to a working version. This is something strange. So, yep. So, we have created employees so far. I don't know why that one is not working, but yeah. So we created a class, we created some employees, and uh, in order to increase the salary, we could simply closure as an argument says employee dot experience is greater than or equals to four. Okay, and uh, I'm saying each employee print an employee dot me dollar salary. I don't know what's going on here. Ouch, sorry. Thanks. So it has all the employees whose salary is, the, but the salaries are still not doubled, but how can we double the salary? Let's see that. Should still work. The end of uh -oh. Okay, so let's f f double the salary. There is another method which takes closure as an argument and collect it. Basically, you can update any value and return that object back from this. And I'm saying employee, employee dot salary is equals to employee dot salary to two. And uh, one more thing, we need to return this object from here. So, yep, yeah, it doubled the salary. For example, Bob has 2,000, now Bob has 4,000. And you could also say sort this, but for that you need to, yeah, it is sorting as well. So that's that. So this this program, how we what we saw that it makes it more readable. Uh, what we are actually doing is writing English. Employees dot find all employees whose experience is greater than four, and just up collect the salaries to double and then sort the names. That's it. Traits. Uh, traits. What are traits? Traits are functional constructs which allow composition overriding and uh, you know these also support static type checking and compilation 
And uh, okay, so this is about the definition. What traits is? Let's see with an example in the Java world. So uh, since I'm writing Java program, so please mind me with typos and call semicolons. Okay. Hello dot Java. Okay, sorry, I have to create a class. Hello. Let me just verify if this is working. System dot dot Then hello. Okay. Okay, cool. So let's say we have a problem where uh, we want to cre create a class greet. Uh, what this greeter class do, it says hello to everyone. And we have this method which says system dot out dot println hello everyone. I need to name this greeter. And okay. Ouch. So let, I'm creating a GUI version of this. So any Java program which you can write in .java file, you can also write in .gui file. So so if you, if I want to say new greeter. Say hello should work uh, class do I have some other class inside it I guess yes okay I'm sorry what No, I guess uh, it's because there is already some other class here. So I'm creating this folder. Oh. So where are you saying I have this greeter class? Yeah, all right, thanks. So this is simple saying hello. Now let's say I want this, I want this hello method inside a class named speaker. So what I can do is, can I just say, say hello over here? Or I'll create an abstract class. I, I yeah, interface. Reason I say greeter. And here I say void, say hello. And I have to override this method over here and say implements greeter. Say hello. Right. But what if I need this method in another class named attendees? So one option I have is I can just simply say implements greeter. Okay, and I define the same method over here. And I can say new attendee dot say hello. But the problem with this code is duplication. So if I want to remove this duplication, what I can do? I can create an abstract, this an abstract class, greeter, where I can say, move this implementation up. And it should work now. Sorry, what? 
Ouch. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Right. But again, what if this attendee is extending some other class uh, name uh, voter or who does the rating? So then we are stuck. We cannot do that. Uh, so is there any way in Java to do this? Yes, there is a way. What we can do is we can say class creator IMPL. I hope you have seen this pattern before. And we create an IMPL and we make this interface again. And you say this, say hello. Yeah, but yeah, I'll come back to that too. So what we can do here is we can say implement creator. And now you can simply say So, yep. Yeah, let's just fix this guy. Yeah, oh my bad. What I'm missing here. Yeah, let's just do this. Right. So this is how we can solve this. But, uh, and what Groovy gives us with trait, it's the similar thing. You can just simply define a trait in a Groovy. Trait greeter and have a method say hello. Hello, everyone. That's it. So this is the similar thing we can do with the traits. So traits, uh, to answer your question with default methods and traits, traits is not just limited to having this. Traits is much more, uh, has much more capabilities than just the default methods. So let's see what we can do with traits. Uh, so this is a simple way to create a trait in a Groovy. And uh, the problem we saw this pattern, IMBL pattern, that can be easily solved using the traits. Uh, you can also say, uh, you can also say, for example, you define a method in a trait and you, your class extend this trait. You can simply call this method, as we saw before. And uh, you could add this behavior at the runtime too. You could use this some states in traits. So you cannot have states in default interfaces. So let's say if I want to have a state, I created this get name method, which is defined by the classes which implement this trait. And now I, I'm using this state inside greeting. And uh, you could do composition of behaviors. So multiple classes can this speaker class can overwrite, implement this greetable and presentable. And uh, yeah. And let's see what this guy does. Do you know which one will be called? So it will be overridden the next. Uh, I'm sorry, I have not updated its older slides. Let's try. 
trait trait create table trait present table whatever yeah class speaker implements greetable present table and you could have greet So the next, whatever comes last in the hierarchy, overrides this implementation. Okay. So you could also add runtime uh, implementation using traits. For example, this attendee class is not ex implementing this greetable trait, but for the object, if I do this, it'll fail, but I can do as greetable and it'll work. So you could assign runtime behavior to the objects using as annotation, as text. And you could also override the default behavior. You can have a body inside your class. And uh, what's next? Shell scripting, you could also use, uh, since you know Java better than shell, you could write groovy scripts and run them as a shell language. You just have to define an environment variable on the top. Just have to say this user dot bin dot env could write a groovy program and run this shell script. That's it. Spock. So you could write expressive test cases using Spock, uh, which says uh, some library returns true. Set up a library, and when result is equals to this, verify this. This is more readable and expressive. Groovy for DSL, you could write DSLs using Groovy. Uh, you could, uh, because of shortage of time, I cannot write a DSL, but you could write a DSL and it'll work. You just have to expose this. Groovy ecosystem. Uh, there are a lot of things in Groovy. Uh, SDK man, Spock, GPass, Gradle, Redpack, Groovy on Android, and Griffon, and Groovy FX and Groove script, Groove CSS, I came to know during this conference. So, yeah. Any questions? All right. That's it. Thank you.